you know, Allah oftentimes says that He reveals the ayat, but sometimes He also says things like وَكَذَلِكَ نُفَصِّلُ الْآيَاتِ that, that is how we ourselves explain the signs. Al-ayat is not just a reference to revelation, it's also a refle- reference to reality. Allah explains everything around you. And every time He explains something, there's a purpose. And so the purpose mentioned in this particular ayah is peculiar. He says, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ So that they can come back. What Allah is about to talk about now is He's going to explain some phenomenon and the purpose of explaining it is to talk to people that have gone far away from Allah and to bring them back. That's the purpose of it. And so He says, لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ So that they may return. Pay attention to it and see if it applies to you. I pay attention to it and I see if it applies to me. الَّذِي آتَيْنَاهُ آيَاتِنَا Those to whom we had given our ayat, our revelations. In other words, this is a person who was given by Allah access to His guidance. So Allah does not qualify here that He's talking about someone at a very high caliber of scholarship, as opposed to someone who just knows a little bit about Islam. It's everybody and everybody, because Allah has given some to every one of us. Because even if you know just a little bit about the Qur'an, little bit about Allah's guidance, even if you just know like the first words of the Fatiha, or all you know is Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, that is still from the ayat of Allah. That is still something Allah gave you. So the favor of Allah, the imtinan of Allah in this ayah is established on everybody listening. It's not talking about someone that is distant from you or me. Atainahu ayatina. But then he describes the problem, the news of this person. Let me tell you about the account of this person who had, we had given our guidance to, our revelations to. We taught him something about this faith. Allah Himself says He's the one who facilitated that learning. And then He says, Fansalaha minha. Al insila khuruju jasad al hayawan, hayawan min jildihi. Mithl al hayya. They say in Arabic that the word in silakh is used for when an animal sheds a, a skin. Like a popular example would be a snake. Snakes shed their skin. And so only the foreskin is left behind. Like especially larger snakes, they do that a lot. And you have just the foreskin left. Now, even though that's the image of a, of a snake, Allah wasn't talking about a snake. Allah was talking about a person who Allah taught religion to. Allah taught them something about his deen. He gave him some ayat. So what does that have to do with a snake leaving its skin? Allah is actually painting the picture of a person who kept the religion on the outside, but slithered out of it from the inside. He removed it from the inside. So the religion was only something they wore almost like a disguise, right? It didn't really impact them on the inside. Even if they were doing the practices of the religion, like prayer or eating halal or saying salam, or dressing a certain way, that was all on the outside. But the inside had already left. There was no soul left in this person that is attached to the faith. It's just this artificial expression of the religion. It's like the shell without the egg, that kind of thing, you know? So Allah says, I want you to hear the news about someone who we gave access to our religion. They learned about our faith, and yet they just kept it on the outside. And they slithered out of it, they slipped out of it. You know, so it gives the impression that they're there in Islam, that they're sincere, they're practicing, they're learning, etc., etc. But on the inside, there's nothing left. What a terrifying image. فَانْسَلَخَ minha. Now let's talk about that at multiple levels. This could happen, like I told you in the beginning, it could happen to somebody who just knows this little about Islam. And this could also apply to someone who spent their entire life studying the religion. People that are very minimally knowledgeable of the faith and people that are even scholars of the faith. It could happen that at one point or another, they, and by the way, al-insilaq, al-ibti'ad kathalik, they say to distance oneself. They lose touch with what Allah had given them. If a person loses touch with what Allah has given you, with the revelation that Allah has given you, no matter how much knowledge you and I acquired in our life, no matter how much you've read or studied or worshipped, the nature of this religion, the nature of this revelation is that you cannot just have it and hold on to it without any effort. You can't say, I read the entire Qur'an two years ago and now I know what it says, it's good enough. You can't. From the outside, you can still quote the ayat. From the outside, you still seem like you're practicing, but from the inside, your heart has been separated from the word of Allah, from the ayat that you were given. And so he says, فَانْسَلَخَ minha." He basically internally, emotionally, spiritually distanced himself from the revelation. So the outside is different now from the inside. And when that happens, 
الشيطان. Shaytan immediately got behind him and started pursuing him wholeheartedly. Now the idea of tabi'a in Arabic, tabi'a means to follow someone. But when you say atba'a, it actually becomes a kind of mubalagha. He followed him 100%. Like there was not a second that shaitan would leave him alone. We're learning something very interesting about shaitan now. We're learning that the people who come towards Allah, who Allah gives guidance to, when they start slipping, shaitan seizes the opportunity and he gets on your case like he, you become his main project. You become, he drops every other distraction, he's on you. فَأَتْبَعَهُ shaitan. You know? And so shaitan will constantly poke at him. And now of course shaitan is gonna give him suggestions that conflict with, that are the exact opposite of the ayat that Allah had given him. Allah had taught this person, a man or a woman, the difference between right and wrong. The difference between being courteous and caring and honest and generous, and between being selfish and self-righteous and deluded and all of these things. But shaitan will come and take what he wants you to follow, and he'll start making the revelation something distant from this person, and the disobedience to Allah starts becoming beautified. وَزَيَّنَ لَهُمُ الشَّيْطَانُ أَعْمَالَهُمْ Shaitan beautified their deeds to them. And so as he starts doing that, what does Allah say? فَكَانَ مِنَ الغاوين. Then he became from those who've gone off course. غَوَى in Arabic is when someone was going on the right course, and they took a turn and they just went off the wrong course. Rawin, you took the wrong exit on the highway and you can't even get back on the highway. That's Rawin. Allah is describing a very scary phenomenon here. Shaitan is not, his, his project in this, this story, in this account, is not people that have forgotten about Allah, that don't believe in Allah. He's not talking about those people. He's talking about good people who have the ayat of Allah and somehow they started slipping away, distancing themselves and then Shaitan got them good. And when shaitan is completely on your case, he will make you do things, even other people that are not even religious. They don't even do such things. And here's this person is, who's a person of faith, he's a person of religion, and he can stoop down to those levels. He can do things that weren't even expected of a non-Muslim. He can fall to those levels. يعني أسفل سافلين, the lowest of the low. 